Hello and welcome back to Ignition GT. So the Honda Civic has long been plagued by, let's call it a slightly fuddy-duddy image. A perception that was definitely reinforced by the Japanese company's seemingly reluctant option. They don't want to go the turbo power plant route. But that appears to all have changed. And what I think is a masterstroke, Honda has addressed both these issues with the all-new Civic. Is it going to be enough to attract buyers from both C and D segments? So you had to give us their thoughts are Dennis Dropper, Roger McCleary and Justin McCall. Hello. Hello, good day. This is quite a different Honda Civic. Should we start styling? Justin, like it, hate it? Love it. Absolutely good. love it. Very different. Very, very, very different to what's currently on the market. I love the styling. It's great. Dennis, it almost seems like um, Honda's moved away from that we don't want to be sporty. And now there's Honda NSX, there's talk of S2000 coming back. Suddenly they bring out a car that gets people noticing because Accord, American version Accord, did no favors from a styling perspective. And the old Civic was a heap of trash, really. This is a huge improvement, particularly on the interior. Mm. Uh, all, the, all the touch points that passengers and driver are in contact with, the, the soft touch surfaces, so it looks and feels a lot better. The styling is a lot bolder, so it's certainly going to stand out in the parking lot. Yeah, that for me is critical, Roger, because you look in these segments, a lot of the time it is very traditional. Nobody wants to wow. be too bold and too different because it seems like it's a sales rep market that they're appealing to. Wow. Guys just want to buy cars. But that's changed a lot, and cars need to be a lot more appealing to wow. the eye. I think in this type of market you need to be there. I think there's a whole new, new change to Honda styling. As you say, trash, I think, was a bit of a brutal word. No, the interior was terrible. I mean, the Civic, no, no, the sure. Civic hatch was great. The sedan was just no, built no, in a different sure. country. But 23 million sold in hmm. the time since they launched is not a bad number from a sales point yeah. of view. But this one, I think, is going to take off. It's well-priced, well-spec. It's new from start to finish, lighter, new motors, new gearbox. The gearbox is lovely. Which new platform. Said. New platform. Yeah. Everything's lighter, stronger, more rigid. It's just a... A great piece of motor engineering. Yeah, and the yeah. one thing you can never fault about Honda, those engines are bulletproof. You know? Well, I want to talk about those engines because I think that's the biggest talking point besides the styling is that Honda's finally gone that turbo route. We saw it with the Type R, incredible. Japanese reluctance to move that way. They've seen the first cars have headed in that direction. What is that 1.5 turbo like? It's actually a pretty good engine. We're very, very impressed. Um, 127 kilowatts, uh, 220 newton meters of torque, which has actually been capped at 220 yeah. um, to give a much smoother sort of power band. Um, no, it's a great engine, very sprightly, more than enough power, and an absolute, absolute pleasure to drive, very smooth. Are people, Dennis, going to get confused? Because you have a look at the, the, at the torque figures uh, in particular, a lot lower than the 1.8, but the kilowatts are obviously sitting a lot higher. Is that going to confuse consumers? Yeah. Is it a good move to have both? Because is that 1.8 maybe going to appeal to the older... Civic buyer, and it, this is the funkier guy? It probably is. I mean, that 1.5 turbo is, is a great little engine, a nice little performer, mm -hmm. even though it's paired with a CVT gearbox, <laughs> which is a very contentious issue. Yeah. But uh, I have to say, I'm not necessarily wild about CVTs. The, this one feels better than previously. It's got some programmed steps in the power delivery, so it feels okay. more like a natural auto. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, you, when you really uh, press the throttle hard, then there's still that typical CVT drone. Mm. So it's not quite as good as the DSG transmissions. Is it an odd pairing, or are they just no, considering all the numbers? They've, Maris, they've done star, uh, uh, surveys there to show that in this segment of the market, I think it was nearly 90% of the people want automatics, and yeah. also the round town driving, mm. you know, sitting in traffic all the time. And I think there's been a big improvement in that gearbox. I honestly don't need... Just normal driving, you don't feel anything different. Yeah, different yeah. And the power delivery starts from the bottom and goes right through. So I think they've done a lot of work on that. And as Dennis says, the 1.8 is going to appeal to certain people and the, and the yeah. more sporty one to others. I think they've just done a great job throughout. Interesting from a space perspective, they're really trying to bridge that gap because this is a lot bigger than the mm -hmm. old Civic. So oh, it is yeah. filling that space yeah. um, that was traditionally, there's a D-segment car. But that crossover appeal, I think, is a clever move on their part. No, definitely, I think so. I mean, the, the, it definitely is a very spacious vehicle, the, the Civic. Um, and as you said before, the, the, the previous Accord was a bit of, bit of a bore. Mm -hmm. um, comfortable, all the bells and whistles, but very, very boring to drive. And I think this is a happy medium between that sort of um, high priced, higher priced um, Accord and the lower priced Civic. And I think, I think that it'll do well. I think they will definitely cross that, that gap between the C and D classes. Good to talk price, I suppose, because that seems like the contentious issue, mm -hmm. Dennis, or, or is it? The prices are problematic, uh, particularly the 1.5 turbo models, mm. 430 and 460. Oh. You're talking about more than 100,000 Rand more 
than mm. rivals like the Focus 1.5T yeah. or the Astra 1.6T. Yeah. And even with a bit of a spec adjustment, there's certainly not that extra money in there. Oh. It is the largest car in its category, but you're already pricing this, this uh, Civic into Passat territory yeah. and just 10 grand less than a 3 Series or a C Class, and that's going to be a hard sell. I imagine that's probably what they've done, is they said, well, listen, there's no more court, so let's get the price closer to that segment. But Honda always has, Roger, been a little bit more expensive than yeah, the Yeah, it's rest. a premium car, really, in and a segment. And peace of seen mind. That. Yeah, and also the yeah, peace I of think, mind, I suppose, that comes yeah, with look, the Honda Yeah, look, also the, the entry level one starts at 330. I mean, you know, and you get a... The one thing that's interesting when they, came, when they showed us the car first is that it could almost be a hatch. You look mm. at it and you think, gee, mm. that could be a hatch or a sedan which a lot of other cars could be, but pointing it out that way. You know, I thought it was, a, it was a good point. Sedans have become a lot more sexy, but if they look so similar, then where's the differentiator? We're going to find that out. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think, I mean, I think one of the things that I do enjoy about the, the sedan is that it's got that sort of coupe, grand coupe, hatchback kind of a, it's very, very sort of hybrid across all those, those uh, styles. Um, I think it works well. I think you know there is going to be a bit of differentiation. I think from the guy driving past and not being able to differentiate between the sedan and the, the hatchback. But I think for the buyer, I, I don't know. For me personally, I don't think it would be too much of, a, of, a, of an issue. I think at the end of the day, it would come down to boot space and the kind of boot space that yeah. I want. And your needs. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. We're running out of time. Dennis, I know you said pricing is, is an issue. What model do you buy in the segment then? I mean, from Honda? And is it the one to buy in terms of its competitors? I'd say if you're going to go for the, the Civic Sedan, as much as I like their 1.5T engine, uh, financially speaking, the 1.8 makes more sense. Okay. And in terms of its competitors, lots to choose from in the segment. Oh, so where, where do we go? I don't know. It's really a personal choice. I, really, it is. But this is the new start for Honda. No doubt the styling has brought a whole new look to Honda. You're getting a premium car, you're getting nice styling and, and good performance, and it's all new. I suppose, just to wrap up, I mean, that, that's the thing at the moment. There are so many good cars to choose from. And I think, Roger, what you said makes sense. Personal choice. So, guys, there you have it. You've seen what the new Honda Civic looks like. Massive improvement from a styling perspective. And obviously now with the turbo engines as well. Thank you very much to my guests for their comments. Up next, the Audi Q2 made its public debut at the Geneva Motor Show earlier this year. And now the baby crossovers hit European roads. Let's take a look. For some time now, Audi has been criticised for their one-size-fits-all approach to styling, which is why the Q2 comes not so much as a breath, but rather a hurricane of fresh air. From the new octagonal grille right up to the contrasting blade, the Q2's exterior consists of numerous polygons of various shapes and sizes. These geometric shapes make up everything from the air vents to the wing mirrors, and will be exclusive to the Q2. From the rear, the newcomer is said to resemble the broad, drawn-up shoulders of an American football player. A bit of a stretch, perhaps, but it is uncannily muscular for something so small. That shapely rump also conceals a massive boot, which will swallow 405 litres of luggage. Not bad for a baby crossover. While few young, upwardly mobile buyers are likely to be excited by boot space, they will probably swoon over the amount of customization options offered by the Q2. The seats, for example, can be specified with red, yellow, orange or white accents, which are echoed on the dash and door pull handles. Audi have also gone to great lengths to appease tech junkies. Basically, uh, we bring everything that is uh, in our top range cars into a smaller package, which means we have here the digital cockpit. We have also a head-up display, which is here a combiner head-up display. We have an 8.3-inch uh, screen. And so it's basically all top-class uh, equipment for this category of car. The list of safety features are similarly comprehensive and wouldn't look out of place in an A8 or a Q7 for that matter. The Audi PreSense front system can detect pedestrians and apply the brakes automatically in case of an emergency. There's also rear cross traffic assist as well as traffic jam assist, which helps with braking, steering and acceleration up to 60 km per hour. Overseas, the Q2 will be available with a range of three turbo diesel engines of the familiar Audi displacements, as well as three turbocharged petrol power plants, ranging from the new 1-litre three-cylinder to the thumping 2-litre TFSI. The 
recently launched A4 has been lauded for its handling prowess and involving drive, and the Q2 will be no different. According to Audi, the wide track, short overhangs and excellent weight distribution endow the Q2 with a go-kart feel, which sounds like a quote from an old mini brochure. Only time will tell if Audi can deliver on the promise of sheer driving pleasure, but for now you can rest assured that once again, it's hip to be square. Well, it seems that Audi has broken its own design mold at last, and the Q2 looks all the better for it. I, for one, am itching to drive it, but hey, we're going to have to wait until the first quarter of 2017 when it finally launches here in South Africa. Another car that many people would undoubtedly like to get their hands on is a VW Golf GTI Club Sport. We did put it through its paces around Midvale Raceway. That's coming your way after the break. Well, I think VW has done a good job. They've upped the power, but uh, we'll see how that fares later on the track.